today we're going to be talking about a quantum model of supply and demand. So perhaps the best known result from neoclassical economics is the supply and demand diagram, which is featured in every introductory textbook. It's a basis for mathematical models of the economy, and it's uh, shaped the way that we uh, go about economics. But as critics have long pointed out, there are a number of drawbacks. It uh, assumes static equilibrium, so there are no dynamics. Supply and demand are assumed to be independent. And there's no empirical validation because something like a demand curve can't even be measured because it requires hypothetical price points. The quantum version, in contrast, sees supply and demand as two sides of the same coin. So what counts is the degree of imbalance. If both increase at the same time, for example, it should have no effect on price, at least at first order. So to see this, let's start with a, uh, a simple case where there's just one seller and one buyer. So we'll model each potential transaction, in this case just one, using an, uh, an oscillator, and the frequency is going to reflect the transaction rate. So uh, as usual, the propensity curve will have a normal propensity curve, and that is generated by a complex um, wave function, which is rotating around the real axis. And the frequency of the rotation is equal to the transaction rate. So if the seller wants to sell one unit per day and the buyer wants to buy one unit per day, then the system is balanced and the frequency is going to be once per day. But suppose now that another buyer enters the picture. So the transaction rate will therefore double and the supplier may not be able to keep up. So by how much should the price go up in order to restore the original frequency? So this uh, frequency rate is increasing, meaning this person is skipping faster and faster, so we have more energy, but we can balance that uh, by uh, with the entropic force, which is required to shift the uh, this propensity curve to the right. So if if we want to move, if we increase the price to to over here, so we're kind of shifting the propensity curve, then that requires energy. We balance that with the energy that we're getting from the increased frequency, and from that we get this equation that x is equal to the square root of 2 times sigma. So this is the same as the price impact uh, rule that we looked at earlier in the last lecture. And the energy needed to displace the oscillator by this amount is delta E equals Planck's constant times the frequency divided by 2. And this was defined earlier as the energy needed to change a person's mind as derived from quantum cognition. So here's the energy associated with bringing in a new buyer. So in the, in the general case, um, we use an oscillator to represent each potential transaction, identical oscillator. We define the imbalance uh, to be iota equal to the difference between the number of buyers and the number of sellers in B and NA, uh, divided by the smallest of those two numbers, that's the potential number of transactions, and then we apply the price impact result. So for example, if there are n available units for sale and the demand per unit increases, by some amount, uh, iota times n, then this will boost the probability of a transaction occurring during that step, and this is equivalent to increasing the oscillator energy and therefore the frequency by an amount, a proportionate amount equal to iota. So the energy, the total energy is going to be given by this. And when we compare with the, the energy for an oscillator in the nth energy state, it follows that for an oscillator in energy level n, we have this relationship between iota and the energy level, so iota equals 2n. And this energy uh, change is equivalent to that produced by displacing a ground state oscillator by x equal to square root of 2 times sigma times the square root of iota. And in general, a price perturbation uh, is going to be, because we can have positive price per perturbations when there's more demand, or negative uh, price perturbations when there's less demand. And so the, the formula is x equals plus or minus square root of 2 times sigma times the square root of the absolute value of iota, where the sign uh, depends on the, the sign of iota. So what that, what that equation looks like is so for positive um, iota, uh, you have a square root shape. And then over here, we have kind of a reflected square root for the, for the negative. And one interesting thing about this is that for a quantum oscillator, 
in the energy state En, the standard devi deviation sigma n is going to be a function of the energy level. So uh, sigma n is equal to, uh, turns out to be equal to the uh, sigma times the square root of the absolute value of iota plus one. So it follows that the observed volatility is not a constant as usually assumed in finance, but varies depending on energy level. And this uncertainty therefore increases with a degree of market imbalance, which is consistent with a large fluctuation seen during times of market stress. So for example, in a balanced market, our plus or minus sigma is like this. But when we go for uh, a large imbalance, then you know this can grow considerably. Now, comparisons with empirical results suggest that for financial markets, the oscillator should spend most of the time near its ground state. And if we assume, uh, for example, the models perturbed at each step by an amount delta x equals sigma, and this, this is what we used in the previous stock market model, then the energy of the system follows a Poisson distribution with an average given by lambda equals a quarter, meaning that the probability of transaction occurring in a particular step is one in four. So this is kind of a, a typical baseline value. Um, this means that the observed daily volatility, because there are sometimes the energy is a little higher than the ground state, so the observed daily volatility would be slightly higher than the ground state volatility. It's boosted by a factor of about square root of 1.5. And because the square root law of price impact, the, uh, the usual version depends on the daily volatility, this means this modifies our value of, of the constant y to square root of four over three, which is very close to one, and it's about in the right area. So to summarize, um, so the, the quantum model treats su supply and demand not as fixed or independent, but as two coupled aspects of a single dynamic process. Transactions are inherently probabilistic, so this uncertainty parameter sigma is not an external noise term or addition, but it's integral to the formula. The model responds dynamically to perturbations and produces non-Gaussian statistics due to this change in volatility. Finally, the model predicts, or really postdicts, since we knew the answer, the square root law of price impact, including a value for the multiplicative constant.